Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to be creative uh, at making Neurofunk. So the problem with Neurofunk is that the genre is very demanding. It really requires you to be a very skilled musician, right? So you need to be, not only do you need to be skilled enough to make cool bass lines, right? You need to make creative bass lines, creative synths and all sorts of stuff like that. But, you know, synthesis is sometimes extremely difficult to learn. Like if I were to make Neurofunk right now, it would kill me trying to synthesize everything from scratch, even though that is something that people go after a lot of the times. The problem is that the newer producers who are just getting into this type of music, you know, it's actually not attractive to them because it's kind of friggin' difficult. So uh, here's one way you can make Neurofunk and boost your creativity at the same time. So you need to have a Spply subscription. If you don't have it yet, get it is the cheapest investment you can make into your future so, so let me show you this if you download the splice ui what you can do with it is you can open the browse just like i did you just saw and write neurofunk right here and you have a lot of samples so we're going to look at drums specifically let's try to find a kick and um, something else For example, I like this sample a lot, so I can use this as a, as a background sample for myself. But with Neurofunk, you really have to be creative because, you know, um, labels don't generally like when you are using samples. Sometimes, even though it's not a big deal, sometimes this actually becomes a scandal because of people using a sample here and there. Like, hey, Calyx and TB use a sample. Oh, Teddy Killers use a sample. Or like, it's, it's a big deal. So... Um, you have to learn how to layer sounds and resynthesize them, right? So resampling is very, very uh, efficient in these situations. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a couple of drum loops here. So I like this kick drum. I like those boosted, like saturated kick drums. We're going to add it onto our playlist. You can see you can download it and freaking put it right in the project. And we're gonna look at snares. So let's find a snare. Also, one of the problems with supplies that you really have to get used to is that a lot of the samples that you see on the market are not actually suitable for the genre. So for example, this snare here is the most popular snare for Neurofunk. You see, this is an artifacts Neurofunk drums pack. But honestly, this is like the worst snare you can use. Even though I do love artifacts and we um, visit each other's streams every now and then, and I love his approach, these samples are not going to work, trust me. So you need to um, have some experience listening to Neurofunk to understand what is a good sample and what is not. As you can see, I already purchased one sample. So this one is really good. Has the punch, has their tail, has everything. Like, sounds a little bit more like an established snare. So we're going to look at the packs. Okay, this is pretty good. Pretty much everything in this pack is pretty good. This is interesting. Black Warp sample pack. This is pretty good. Something like that is pretty cool. cool. I'll download it. So let's go to our sounds now. Here's the library that we have. It's all on our hard drive. This is actually the one, one that I like much better, so I'm going to use this one. And now what we have to do, we can use this break loop here as our secondary loop. So we're going to put it on track one and remove the low end. Obviously, we don't want the conflict. And also, you know, the way I like to use samples is I find a specific sound in a drum loop that I want to play around with. So I just remove everything else. I love this kick, the bouncy kick. And I can use that with the delayed snare. So as you can see, it's actually kind of more fat and more real when you use something like that in like behind your actual kick drum. So this is why I buy samples like that. It's really nice. You can remove some of that low end on the break loop here. It's a little too much. 
Also, don't forget that it's a little bit too loud once you get it out of the box. You need to regulate it. So the main kick, the fundamental kick drum, this one is supposed to be the louder one in the mix. So we're going to put it on a separate mixture track, call it a kick drum and yeah, make sure it's not too loud. We don't want it to go above zero dB. So that's pretty, pretty good. And this is the sound that it's going to play with. It's going to be the same with this break here because it's gonna be like a, make, it, it's like basically a small company to our snare so that our snare didn't feel too isolated. So it's gonna give some, that, some of that really nice noise in the background, so. So you can see. These are just two random samples that I selected. Obviously they're not perfect, but Let's put it to 174, add some noise rides. As you see, there's still a problem. The, the snare is a little bit too muffled. So we're gonna add some of that extra crisp on the high end. We got our snare on mixture track number three. So this is a snare. Let's call the number one a break loop because that's where we have our break loop. And let's look at the snare and you see it misses some of that high end. So we'll help it out. And it's gonna be sounding more crisp enough. Yep, that's true. So we got that noise right here. Make sure that this noise right doesn't have a low end as well. And I'm gonna show you how you can create a crashed ride on top of it. So don't forget that this is only here to fill the empty space in the track. And this is not needed for anything else. So this ride is pretty helpful uh, for, you know, to make a feeling of a movement in the track and it's not going to serve to any artistic purpose. So in the noise section, we go and create white noise right here and we put it like every four steps. So next thing you can do is you can use this LFO and put it on the level to make it like crunchy and you regulate the, with level you regulate how much of that effect you want on your hat usually something like this is more than enough then we go to envelope one and we remove the, de uh, the sustain next step filter normal high pass and remove some of that low end no resonance to make sure that we got bright uh, high end, then a little bit of hyper dimension with stereo and maybe regulate the noise relativity to LFO some more. So now you get that crunchy little hat that you hear in so many tracks and you can play it in the mix and see how it sounds. One thing that you're left with is uh, crash ride. One thing that you need to do is you need to fill it with that uh, little t -t -t at. So what I normally do is I open another serum, go to analog, white noise, put a very fast LFO here in the envelope mode to the level and we place it in the right locations and we got a hat like this going for us. Make sure to remove that unnecessary low end. So we go here, we click end here. If you want to make like uh, manipulate uh, the speed of LFO a little bit better, remove that BPM here and play with the rate. So that sounds good to me. I'm gonna add some extra high end because I want this to sound a little bit more open. I'm gonna do the same with the crashed ride that we just made. Let's see if we want crashed ride to be a little bit faster to make a more groove. So it's more accented right now. So you can see it's very easy to take a couple of samples 
and build a really nice drum loop together. And what we're going to do now, we're going to download random bases from Splice. And I'm going to show you how you can resample them to make them unique. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. And uh, obviously stretching the sound, adding some filters. Uh, you can also use Harmer. It's got this interesting, weird spectral um, resampling thing. Or you can use Contact 6 or whatever you use. And it's pretty good as well. So here's what we can do here. We go to Browse, we write Neurofunk Bass. And let's see what kind of samples are the most popular ones. This is clearly not Neurofunk. The fuck? I think it doesn't understand what I'm actually searching for. So we'll look for Neurofunk and then go bass like this. Yep. This is pretty good. Let's let's give Oof. Wow, some of those bases, man. Holy shit. So let us take these bases into our playlist. So we just purchased a couple of bases right here. We put them in our playlist like this. How many do I have? Four. So this is number five. Um, yeah, that's more than enough. So, okay, so let's start with one simple fact. Using these samples, even though they are royalty free after you purchase them and you can use them however you want, it's not gonna, you know, everybody's gonna know. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you are doing something extra to make the bass difference. So what I used to do when I started my career, I would download the basses like this. Not this one. I, I'm not going to work with this one right now. And like I would select a specific place in the baseline where, where I, which I liked the most. And I would stretch the fuck out of it to make it sound more creative and add some different effects on my mixer track to change it. So this is one of the easiest ways to do it. You remove the long part. You keep like a one bar here and you play the drums next to that bass while you are switching the position of the bass and, you know, uh, from which the sample triggers. So you're going to try and find that specific location that you like. So for example, I really like this. So in order to make sure that it doesn't sound exactly the same, we're going to change it. We're going to send it to mixture track number five and play around with a couple of cool tools. So first equalizer, of course. With equalizer, I'm going to change the balance of the sound unpredictably, remove some of that um, bass, add some subs add some mids, remove some high mids and add some treble. After that, we can use like a sausage fattener or fat filter Saturn or um, OTT or wave shaper, something like that to make sure that the bass um, like reacts to the equalizer and distorts it. So that makes a bigger difference between the original file and what we have. So we open that little um, Saturn 2, and let's see. Changes the sound a little bit too much, so we're gonna go into the tube section and select clean tube, and you know, make sure that we don't affect too much bass. So we create a separate section here. So you can see it slightly adjusts how the track sounds. This is how it used to sound and this is how it sounds now. So it kind of sounds different, not necessarily better, but on the other hand, it sounds pretty loud and clear. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the MIDI output and apply some of that. 
kick snare kick snare side chain so we call this side chain and uh, now we're going to open the kickstart 2 which is the tool i'm using for side chaining click on that midi right here open the detail settings the vst wrapper settings input port we put it to zero and now the kick is going to be responding to the side chain as long as it's in the playlist so i allocated the side chain according to how i draw my kicks and snares so you can see every time a kick or snare hits let's put them together so there would not be any confusion you can see kick snare kick snare and the side chain plays along with them exactly the same way so that's going to bend the bass <laughs> So we remove the conflict and now you know one more thing don't forget to once you have made some adjustments don't forget to get back to sample and play it a little bit again from different positions maybe you will find a position that sounds better now after you have adjusted the way that the bass sounds so Oof. That bass in the beginning is so cool, isn't it? I really like this. I'm gonna definitely copy this part and see what we can do with it. So let's try this. Copy, copy. Ooh, there, I forgot that all the bases are here, so let me remove it. So, you know, this kind of changes the groove a little bit. So playing around with the sample and seeing how it sounds from different positions can actually help you to find that creative decision that you otherwise would have not found. So this is pretty cool. So you can see it already sounds pretty cool and creative, but we need to make sure that we have some of that um, extra coolness. So we're going to play with different sounds instead of focusing on the same one. So you can see that these three samples are all in F, which is pretty nice. Um, even though I like to go uh, one key lower with Neurofunk. So I will go and shift pitch 100 cents down. Or we can do like this. Oh, do, do, do. Oh, do, do, do. Let's see how it sounds. Wow, wow. Something like that, right? Ooh, this sounds so nice. So imagine. This pretty. This sounds pretty wicked. So I'm gonna. I don't even. This sample is perfect. So you see it. All the bases we can send them to the same track and see how the second base reacts to the adjustments that we have made right here with the Saturn. It's kind of loud, but it's fine. So I'm gonna make a copy of this base. Let me make sure that it's the right length. So I'm making this a, like I'm gonna make a copy here and I'm gonna add one extra like a key switch wow 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 just 100 cents up and we have do 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 wow wow do 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 wow wow actually we have to go one key down because these both are f and i went 100 cents down right here so on this sample we're going to go 100 cents downstairs as well so it's going to be do 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 wow wow yeah you can hear that and with sidechain, it's going to make sure it's not conflicting with the kicks and the breaks that we have and snares and everything and the hats. 
So this sounds pretty cool, but you know, sometimes when the basses are so loud in the middle, the problem with those can be is that um, you don't uh, you don't pull enough attention of the listener toward the bass line. So sometimes adding an extra equalizer and adding some of that, boosting some of that low end back after all the saturation, blah, 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 it can actually make a right adjustment. So let's see. We will remove some of that mid, high mid as well, because it's kind of annoying. This is pretty nice. So we're going to play around with these two samples and try to change the, the position of those. So we want one thing that you can pick up from this idea is that you want them to sound the same. So if we were to adjust these two samples here, whoa, whoa. Their position is better if we select both of them and modify them together. So let's see. As you can see that there is no better position for sounding the same. So let's try and change the second sample now to sound differently. So not necessarily the best. What we can do is that like for sure I like the timbre right here, this opening up. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's really good. I like it so much. So I'm gonna try and use this other third bass of which we have. It's also F. So we know now but that we have 100 cents lower than F. So we're gonna make sure that we play around with some of that. Okay, so with these rubbery basses, one thing I found really nice to keep yourself creative with those basses, which, you know, adjust all the time, they modify the sound all the time, you can, you know, speed them up a lot and see how they work with the drums. So as you can see, that sounds pretty cool. So you can listen to the whole bar and now all you need to do is accent on how cool the groove sounds with this last sound that we downloaded from Splice. Or actually, you know what I think? The first sample actually could be replaced by the one that we have. See, this is pretty, pretty, pretty nice because it, it punches like... You see, I'm not a big fan of those like long, uh, really crazy loud basses. I prefer some of that soldier like uh, stuff. So we're going to put this on the track number five and let's listen how the bass changes now. So we remove this one for now. Let's remove this one key lower. You know what I feel this groove should sound like? I feel like the, it should sound like this. It's all about playing like the groove in your head and finding maybe a sample that adjusts it. And most of the times you already have that sample. So let's take a look at this. I don't know what this... I don't know what this bass shot here is. Let's listen to this. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not the best one for for what we're looking for, but we'll try and give it a shot. So I like this little cut, but because the way that I play the groove in the end is the problem with this bass is that it plays so it kind of brings the bass in reverse you can cut this little piece make unique as a sample save it and reverse it 
put it back on the original pitch. So maybe this sounds a little bit better. So this makes more sense to me. Mm, still not perfect, but it's an option. Maybe some of you like it and maybe some of you would make a track out of something like this. Also, sometimes, like, this is my personal preference. I like that noisier, friendly intentions groove, which goes a little like... Not like... So this is what I feel sounds really nice with the way that I make heavy basses. So I'm going to keep, you see this little hat that I used to have here. Okay, so let me show you that. So we remove these and we keep only this one in the middle and put it louder a bit. So it sounds like... Right? Obviously it's not accented enough, so we're, we will need to make sure that it's visible in the mix. So let's say we got a certain loop. I don't know how it sounds. It doesn't really matter all that much. I'm going to show you an infinite ways of creating, cre of making creative basses. So, ooh, this sounds pretty fucking sick, man. Gee. So what I'm saying, infinite amounts of crazy basses, this is what I mean. So you can render this small piece right here, this small piece of, oh, actually you don't need to render it. You can go to master channel, open up that Edison and play these bases through. So I'm going to cut all the unnecessary base here, make sure that's aligned perfectly and give some empty space here so that we have the time to click pause and let's play that base one more time. So we have a really nice creative bass line right here, which we can now stretch reverse do anything we want with it, basically, and it's going to give us a completely different result. It's never going to sound remotely similar to what we made before. So as you can see, this sounds pretty cool. Let's get that pitch back up. Now we cut this second piece here put it on the full length and we're going to speed it up, but make sure we maintain that we maintain that, uh, pitch. Something like this, for example. So you can see that there's an infinite ways of being creative. Now we're going to open, um, say contact six. I don't care and you know load that sample up there and see what we can do with it this is one of the ways that i think inside info used to sample bases like this this is really old school like 2000 and something years old i don't know it's really old but here we go we take that base in here first we go to the edit mode and what we want to do is we want to go to the modulation tab and remove the release so that the sample finishes right away as soon as we stop playing the sample it finishes otherwise it's going to sound like volume gradually dropping we don't want that so you can see that right away our base is absolutely unique right <laughs> It's like nothing else, but there are a couple of sound effects here, so you can add them. There are instrument effects like delays, reverbs, modulation, and stuff like that, some gainers, and insert effects. So we can add some distortion, distortion, whatever that is. So 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 there those are like crazy weird. Let 
maybe this one is a little bit too much, but actually it does have pretty cool effects. So you can come here, base invader, like this one. <laughs> You see that you have a really cool base here and you know it's really easy to change the position from where the base is playing also you can apply it to the picture track with our previous effects so it's going to be even more crunchy or we can now remove them because we have a cool sample and use the base that we have so as you can see this sounds pretty interesting. If you can make a groove like... It can sound sometimes even more cool. So we're gonna adjust our side chain to sounding like that. So this is pretty cool. And uh, obviously you need to regulate that loudness of the bass. So make sure it's not louder than the drums. So this is pretty cool. And you can change the position of the sample. You need to go to Wave Editor. And you see Start and End. You can choose. Now you have a really cool stabby bass. Or you can just make it sound like this. So you see, this is a really nice method. And uh, obviously it's, uh, it's uh, absolutely unpredictable. So you're going to make something that, you know, uh, sounds only the way that you want it to sound. And uh, you did zero synthesis for that. There's basically like a straightforward formula to resampling. You don't need to have any extra knowledge. So you can understand how this was like the first skill that I actually learned when I was learning how to make Neurofunk like nine years ago. But you mean, I mean, it's kind of still relevant. It holds up with all the new technologies. You can still find some cool effects on here. So let's see. You see, there's a, a little bit of that phase movement. And uh, you can also reverse the sample. So you can click reverse here. So it's going to sound in reverse. Holy sh... Jesus! This sounds actually pretty cool. So, uh, I mean, uh, this is a cool way to resample something. And now we're gonna close this down and we're gonna open Harmer, which is, I think, exclusive to FL Studio, but... I can still show you something. Here's the Harmer. You can open the imager here. So right here, you upload your sound. I'm not really good with Harmer. Some people are incredibly creative with Harmer. I'm actually not, but I will show you this real cool trick here. So here's what we're going to do. We call, drag and drop the picture, like the spectral uh, of the uh, um, bass sample that we made right here in Harmer and make sure that it's there. So let's listen to how it sounds. So you can see it distorts the picture heavily, but there are a few knobs to help you out. So time knob is the position, speed knob, how fast it sounds. C is like image core speed. So it's really hard for me to explain what it does, but it's basically... Um, you can look at this like that. Playing around with these four knobs is going to modify your sampling 
very unpredictably. So I think scale is um, how detailed the bass sounds. So let's play with the scale. Let's play with the scale a little bit. So it becomes a little bit more obvious. Then there's a little bit of too much unison. Remove that. One thing I I feel like is necessary for um, bass to sound better with Harmer it is to use some of that distortion, right? So there's a lot of that here. That was a random distortion that I just I just touched. So sounds pretty cool. So let's make the image speed a little bit slower. Change the beginning of the sound position. See, it stretches the sound in a weird way, but sometimes the result is amazing. Oh, that's right. This image frequency pixel scale, change it to zero and the sound will open up. Also, it's really nice because you can play around. Because it's a, a FL Studio native uh, plugin, you can play around with the pitch. So this sounds like a pretty cool effect to have. Let's put this on our fifth track right here and put it somewhere right in the big in the very end of the of the uh, fourth bar and now this these two are empty we don't need that so let's play some of that boring bass it's not going to be sounding anything interesting for now and remove it from here to have that transition with that harmer bass let's see <laughs> So, just need to make sure that your key, like, is, it's in the same key. So, so that's pretty interesting. It doesn't sound like a completely unique and amazing bass, but it's good enough and it could apply to somewhere. Um, you need to be spending a lot of time listening and changing positions of your bases. What I sometimes do is I change the position of every base and then just reverse it if I didn't like it. So like this. See, that sounds freaking cool, man. Let's open some of those effects back up. So you can see that these are pretty cool and you can add some of that little percussion here and there to make it more feel more alive and should be fine. Oof, what's... And with those Harmer bass lines, what you can do is you can do an infinite amount of things. So sometimes I just played with Harmer for hours many years ago. That's like that was the, the key to finding a really a really cool groove for me so we remove this one sometimes hats are in the way of cool grooves so i'm removing those so let's see
And sometimes it really goes down to so much detail that you just have to make sure that the first hit sounds the right way. So let's try and so this is pretty cool. Oh, this is nice. This sounds pretty nice, man. Really, I like it. And we still have those original samples, which we didn't touch. And we have those different fucked up samples that we made. So we have so much stuff to play around now. We just download like five bases and we have like a, an infinite amount of bases now. So you can see that how this sounds pretty nice, even though I haven't selected any special drums. If I were to choose a different snare, like some of my snares, for example, like this one, let's try to find a better one. So the snare needs some high end. We're going to put it on the th third track. And, you know, working with some of that drums and rides is always essential. So some crashed ride like that. And yeah, I mean, I don't know how relevant this recipe for uh, producers right now, because I, I tend to see that many people just go download or create some wavetables and create bases with Serum. But I can assure you that this method still works and you can still come up with some really cool idea like that. So um, I hope that this video helps you to develop some of that creativity, some of that vision towards cool grooves and, you know, it's as easy as that. I mean, just download a few samples. And if the samples are not working, this means that, you know, you are on the way to learning how to find the right samples. And you need to remove that all completely and buy new samples and start over again. You know, as time passes, you will learn how to distinguish the suitable samples from the unsuitable ones. And, you know, as I said, this method is purely for boosting your creativity and learning how to sample the sounds. So if you're not a really, really skilled and experienced neurofunk producer, this should be a good way for you to get started. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the content. Subscribe for more and make sure you drop that like and uh, get on my Discord so we can talk about production more and you will find out more about the state of my drawn based production course that I'm working on and everything else. You can just uh, talk and present your demos there as well. So see you around, guys. Peace.